Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also had a ton of fun playing with you guys last weekend at the GI Origins game, the BB Wars game. Long weekend, I am absolutely dead tired. I'm beat, I'm so tired. But that, nonetheless, it was a fun game, so much fun. So thank you all for coming out and hanging out with me. For everybody I met out there, so great. Now I am chilling in NorCal for the next week, recovering uh, before I head back to Southern California and then on to Copperhead. That's, I guess, the next big game I've got. I might play a little couple, couple skirmishes between there and now and then, and I've got a couple little stops I'm going to make too. Maybe try to film those along the way for you guys. But yeah, Copperhead's the next big one. So if you guys aren't going, definitely come check out Copperhead. Uh, registration's still open. I think they may have a couple tickets left. Uh, I am going to be playing on the green team, the Pacific Coast Union, I forget this, it's a, new, it's a new faction. There's still UFS and now it's like the Pacific Coast Godzilla crew, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so I'm playing with the green team, so green side. So yeah, come join me there, It'll be so much fun. I'm praying for not a hot, hot day because I would stink. Um, also, what's going on, let's see, oh, behind me, my cameras. Everybody always asks about cameras. Last week I talked about my main filming camera, what I use, my old Sony and then my new uh, Canon I'm using. Um, my GoPros, I've got a bunch of them. I've got a three black, a four black, um, three black plus, four black. Uh, my session for my reverse cam, those are both my primary, my backup uh, helmet cams. And then I'm using this ATN Shot Track as my scope cam. I've been really, really happy with it, except it, you can see right there, it kind of got shot out, the, the laser. It actually has a red laser on it, which is kind of cool. So you can aim it and also use it. So it's kind of a dual purpose and you can run the laser independent of the camera. Super easy to use, it's got a little switch here in the back, you just flip it and it's on. And the best part is it uses CR123 batteries. So like the actual little, little expensive Surefire ones, but um, you don't have to worry about recharging it, which is awesome. Like these GoPros, I've got that battery pack in the back of my head. The session is kind of the flaw to the session is the battery thing. Um, well, by the way, this is all the brain exploder stuff. It's the Brain Explorer mount. Definitely pick it up. If you guys don't have, if you got a session, get the Brain Explorer mount. He's also doing these plexiglass shields. I put mine in the back because I run as a reverse cam and I've already had the back of my GoPro just shot the crud up for playing CQB. So yeah, this is kind of what I use when I do gameplay footage. Uh, it does get expensive. We're talking a bunch of cameras. Like I said, you only really need one, but at least three if you want to do a full setup. And I have, like I said, my fourth one is my backup here. So uh, I always do a little show and tell this week, and this one is GoPro stuff. All right, enough of me yapping, and let's dive on into what you're really here for, and that is the Palco Mail Call. Steve White writes, so I have a question about airsoft grenades and workplace shenanigans. What would happen if you filled an airsoft grenade with glitter? Would it hurt the grenade? Funny you mention this, I actually did a video right here about glitter grenades. Uh, yeah, you can do it. You can do it uh, with Thunderbees. Now, let me let me digress back to do not, I mean, you're talking about workplace, being funny in the workplace, place, right, and messing around with people. Um, Thunderbees safe. I mean, it's, it's just CO2 blowing a piece of plastic open. Yes, you can put glitter in it. Um, yes, your coworkers are probably gonna get mad at you for doing it. I see people put powder in it as well. Uh, glitter gets all over the place. And I did this video, it is a joke, because I mean, glitter is a pain to get out of your gear. I mean, definitely don't use it at an airsoft field. And uh, you're probably gonna be vacuuming glitter up out of whatever area you're in. But the, the core question here, will it break the grenade like a thunder beam? Nah, not at all. I, I did it for my test. It, it turns out great. It's actually kind of fun. Uh, I wouldn't do it when I'm playing like an open game with like everybody, like a pickup game. But if it was like just teammates and I really wanted to troll them hard and everybody kind of knew, mm, yeah, I might do it, you know, <laughs> something like that. But yeah, do not take it to an open game. And again, uh, bringing something that looks like a grenade to your work may not be the best idea. Uh, and you don't want to end up in jail or worse. So uh, with all those caveats and, and warnings, uh, bottom line, sure, man, you can put glitter in there, you can put talcum powder in there, you can put whatever you want and have a little fun with it. Paralyzer 777 writes, what are your thoughts on wearing a dye eye for mask with a helmet for milsim events rather than just eye pro and lower mesh? Will comfort become a factor for longer events? I've never owned an eye for mask and wanted feedback before investing. So for some milsim games, they can be very strict on the rules and a dye eye for mask is not gonna work uh, just from the aesthetics, the look. But I've played American Milsim games, things like that. They don't care as long as the mask color pretty much matches your uniform. Uh, shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, and yeah, they're, they're comfortable and provide a lot of protection. So if you're concerned about protection, definitely go with that full face like that. So my recommendation is look at the rules of the Milsim event you want to go play. If they're fine with masks, which most are, um, then you're good to go. Now, if you're looking at something like I'm going to be going to a Milsim West game, 
Absolutely not. Uh, you will be laughed straight off the field for doing that. That's, that's not, uh, Milsim West is about immersion. But American Milsim, I've seen those fielded a few different people, have put them on just from a safety and protection standpoint, especially the close-up games like Faded Giant. Um, no problem at all. I've actually, I think I've seen them at John Lou events. Don't quote me. But then at regional Milsim events, again, check with your promoter, check with the event person. Most of them are not going to restrict your face protection. Um, they're just gonna require full seal ANSI goggles or face protection of some sort. So, I hope that helps. Uh, fantastic mask, by the way, I love it, super comfortable. Uh, although a bit on the pricey side, but you do get what you pay for. Andrew Venus writes, hey Jonathan, I'm from the north of the UK where it rains a lot. Do you have any advice on playing in the rain with an AEG? Yes, I played off and on, uh, mainly from the southeast United States. So we do get some rain in the summer, especially spring, definitely. And uh, it can be some downpours. I mean, just absolute, what we used to call it frog drowners. That, that's a very southern thing to say. So it rains so much it drowns a frog. Uh, but yes, uh, your biggest problem with an AG is you want to make sure the primary electrical system in the gun is not damaged. Now, certain guns, I'm going to give you different advice on. So... Starting with a regular good old bog standard AEG, uh, no MOSFET, nothing like that, no electron trigger system. Uh, it's pretty bulletproof. Uh, as long as you don't uh, get the battery wet and the connectors around the battery, so I'd advise you maybe when you plug the battery in, a little electrical tape around that connector there just to help waterproof it. Works pretty darn well. Silicone tape works even better just to waterproof. That's the connection from the battery to where it plugs into the gun. I think that's gonna be your biggest weak point. Uh, there. The other two connections that you have to kind of worry about is your motor grip. You want to look at the motor grip. So actually where you know, you're holding your gun like an M4. Um, AKs, they're pretty well sealed. Um, M4s on the end cap, some of them do have vents. Some are just finned, some are sealed up. So the more open it is, the more airy it is, the better chance you have of getting rain in there. So I would maybe tape that up um, and just use that. Make sure to help waterproof it. Again, silicone tape, duct tape, gaffer's tape, something like that, just to help keep that area sealed if you're concerned, especially uh, in heavy, heavy rain. But I've seen people submerge their AEGs, pull them out of water, and they still function. Um, I just wouldn't necessarily <laughs> make a habit of doing that. Now, with that in mind, you start moving to guns with electronic trigger systems and especially MOSFETs, and you could get into some situations with moisture. So um, I would definitely say with those, take it a lot more careful. I've seen people a lot of uh, people waterproof their circuit boards. So if they have an exposed MOSFET circuit board, let's say like some of the new Classic Army ones that are coming out or some of the new G&Gs where the actual uh, guts of the MOSFET are in the buffer tube. If you're concerned about moisture in there, like you're gonna be like diving in the rain and water and possible puddles like where the that could get in there i've seen people use waterproof electronic spray to spray that down although that's getting pretty crazy and that's a tip that came over from the system of ptw world which those things if a drop of rain falls out of the sky it seems like somebody if owns one's going to have a problem they were really finicky with moisture so if you're running standard AG, no problem just a regular micro switch trigger in there and that's it um like what you'd find in the aries guns no problem, you're probably okay. Uh, you start getting the MOSFET guns, I would definitely be a lot more careful with them and make sure you waterproof them. And you just don't want to submerge those at all. You don't want to get those buried in water. But aside from that, you should be pretty darn okay. Remember, most of the electronics are going to be in the buffer tube or they're going to be around that grip. Uh, with the exception of the Crytac, if they're on the, the actual mech box shell itself, so you should be fine on those with the MOSFET. So uh, a little bit of advice, hope that helps out. And if you're really concerned, you can always tape the top of your motor grip where it meets your body. If it's like an AK or an M4 or something where you have that situation. Guns like the G36, no problem at all, because that's a big sealed polymer lower. Should be a lot better off in the rain. Dream Airsoft writes, Hey, Jonathan, have you ever heard of an extendable barrel for an airsoft gun? Well, I'm not quite sure what you're going at here, because it could be one of two things. If you're talking about barrel extensions, meaning you can actually get an extension, screw it on the end of your existing barrel, then yes, they're out there. There's plenty of them. You can get kits that are like one inches, two inches, four inches. They can go crazy. I've seen barrel extensions like eight or 12 inches long. Um, so yes, that. Now you're talking about an extendable barrel where you actually can telescope it, kind of like a you know, pull it out and make it longer. Never seen one of those. I've seen people use, of course, you can use suppressors to extend effectively extend your inner barrel, hide it up underneath. But uh, as for an extendable one where you can go, oh, I want to make it a 14 and a half inch barrel today and then click, 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 you know, and then bring it down to 10 and a half. No, I haven't seen it. Be kind of cool, but you still have to swap out the inner barrel on those. So if somebody made one of those. But as far as I know, I have not seen that. I've seen quick change barrel systems. I've seen, like I said, the barrel extensions you can screw on. Um, thread adapter barrel extensions that change the, the thread gender or even thread positive to negative. Uh, and even suppressors, but never one that you can telescope in and out. So I hope I answered your question there and made some sense in the process. 
Well guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one goes out to a buddy of mine. I actually saw him a couple weeks ago in uh, Texas, actually in Houston, when I went to High Ground Airsoft in Houston, Texas. By the way, I had so much fun out there uh, a couple weeks ago, hanging out with everybody in the field and getting to see airsoft in different places. But that aside, this is uh, Scott's channel, Scott Hallenbach, and it is US Airsoft or USA Airsoft. And now I gotta ask him, is it US Airsoft or USA Airsoft? Because the A is shared. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, he does some fantastic videos, specifically his top list. So this is like top five, top three, top 10 lists. Um, this one I'm looking at here is the top five airsoft shotgun builds video. It's actually pretty fresh off, one of his more recent ones, and definitely worth the watch. And this is not your starter shotguns. This isn't just grabbing a CYMA. These are some pretty high end stuff. But if you guys are into the listicle thing, which is what, what he does, or third person video game footage, or actually game footage, not video game footage, because uh, he actually follows people around and kind of does that scout the doggy kind of style. In fact, he was actually even uh, highlighted on the Scouts channel. So uh, you know he's doing something right. Definitely check out US Airsoft's channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, definitely mash that button. And as always, you can click the uh, video right over here next to me and I'll have a link down in the description below so you can take right on over, watch the video and check out the channel. All right guys, that is it for this week. And thank you as always for being so awesome in the comment section below and asking some fantastic questions. And if you want to get your question on the show, super simple, put it in the comment section below, vote up your favorites and they'll get on the next show. I do read every single one. I just obviously can't get them all in the same show, but I do pay attention and the questions I see over and over again, I will make sure I try to get you guys on the show, especially the good ones. Also, don't forget, got the web store, some patches, help support the show. And um, if you guys have recommendations, by the way, for video recommendations of the week, I always like to see those too. If you have something good, uh, you found a channel that I've never highlighted before in a previous video, let me know. I mean, I'm always looking for stuff. I don't get a chance to dig deep into YouTube as much as I uh, would like to because I'm spending so much time making it, but I love seeing your guys' recommendations. So uh, that's about it for this week. And until next week, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.